Hello, welcome to Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Rochelle harrison Pless. Thanks for joining us. Coming up. Zimbabwe's constitutional court upholds the election win of President Emerson Mnangagwa, rejecting an opposition challenge and paving the way for the incumbent's inauguration. Rwanda making moves to cut its coal consumption, the government increasingly investing in renewable energy in a country where nearly 70% of households do not have electricity. And ex-Arsenal coach Arsene Wenger receives Liberia's highest honour, awarded by the country's president and former football star George Weyer, who paid tribute to his revolutionary work. Good to have you with us. My door is open and my arms are outstretched. Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Mnangagwa, appeals to his rival, opposition leader Nelson Chamisa, after the country's constitutional court upheld the incumbent's election win. The opposition MDC alliance had thrown down the gauntlet with a legal challenge amid accusations of electoral fraud on a mammoth scale. But this was rejected by the court on Friday, clearing the way for Mr Mnangagwa's inauguration on Sunday. Owen Barnell has the details. Zimbabwe's constitutional court. Inside, lawyers gathered on Friday for Chief Justice Luke Malaba to reveal the decision the whole country was waiting to hear. Emerson Dambuzo Nangagwa is duly declared the winner of the presidential elections. The court unanimously upheld President Manangagwa's July election victory, despite the opposition's claims of vote rigging saying credible evidence had not been produced. Outside the court, both sides' legal teams reacted to the news. Facts are established by evidence, and we've always said that there was no evidence, and the court found that there was no evidence of the malpractices alleged. These were just bold allegations. Opposition candidate Nelson Chamisa's lawyer criticised the ruling, saying there were serious legitimacy concerns. We are happy on account of the questions raised which in our view, Zach failed to answer. Right now, we still do not know how many votes Idi Mnangagwa managed to gather. Right now, the 16,000 votes admitted by Zek have still not gone away. The opposition claimed Zimbabwe's electoral commission rigged Mnangagwa's figures using double counts and fake polling stations. In going to court, the opposition wanted either a fresh election or a declaration Chamisa won. Now, Manangagwa's inauguration will be held within 48 hours. To Rwanda now, where the government is pouring funds into renewable energy sources. The East African country hopes to slash its coal consumption in half, with a slew of hydropower plants popping up over the past decade. According to a recent World Bank report, the number of Rwandans with access to electricity has tripled since 2009, mostly thanks to green energy. But many of the country's residents remain in the dark. France 24's Mariana Getty and Julia Steers have the story. As night falls on the streets of Rwanda's capital, Kigali, the city steadily lights up. But just a few kilometers away, Damien and his five kids remain in the dark. Their neighborhood, like many across East Africa, has no electricity. When I manage to work, for example, for one euro, I buy two candles and I give them to my daughter. But I cannot lie to my children when I don't have enough for light. But at least they ate. That's what counts. It's very tough for me because if we had electricity, I would have better grades. Like their family, 70% of the country's residents lack access to power. The government is building new output sites. 16 hydropower plants have been built since 2009, and this one is the largest. It was built in 2015, and since then, over half of the total electricity generated across Rwanda is from renewable energy. Rwanda of 4,000 hills. So in, in every hill, the, the, it is located to some, some rivers. So it is where you can find, find a place for producing electricity. In under a decade, Rwanda managed to get 29% of its population on the grid, compared to 10% previously, setting a record in Africa for that 10-year period. On the outskirts of the village of Muhanga, the arrival of power led to an uptick in economic activity. This plant has been able to hire 10 people to produce a brand of made-in-Rwanda pasta. By hand, we can process the 
the small quantity, but with the machine and the electricity, the quantity increasing. To build infrastructure, Rwanda will heavily rely on private investment to the tune of $150 million in six years in order to meet a target to electrify all of the country by 2024. What do 60,000 shopkeepers, lawyers, police officers and housewives in Dakar have in common? Well, they're all members of a secret online community for ladies only. Admission to the group is by referral and in just two years, the Internet Forum is now the place to go for women in the Senegalese capital, whether they're after advice or just a sense of solidarity. This report from our correspondents Sarah Sacco and Emmanuel Londay. Have you got any news on the trial? Mm, not yet. Umi is chasing up on the latest case handled by the Ladies Club, an online community she manages. I was speaking with Kodu Aisha, who's our representative in Tuba. She's following the trial of the young woman who was beaten by her husband. It was posted online at 11.35 p.m. on a Sunday, and I didn't think it would go viral at that time. But overnight, it ended up all over social media. From giving legal advice on domestic violence, medical help in an emergency, to sharing opinions and tips on makeup and fashion, the Ladies Club provides a safe place for more than 60,000 online members to help each other. Each member needs a sponsor who's already a member in order to be added. If you just look at the Ladies Club on Facebook, you'll never find it. The Ladies Club's popularity and power to mobilize its members to rally behind causes is partly due to the support it offers women. If being a feminist is defending the woman's right, fighting for their respect, given more consideration and not treated as second-class citizens, then yes, we're feminists. For the club's administrators, the group's actions don't stop online. They decided to launch a magazine dedicated entirely to women and gender issues. There, it's 100% Senegalese. This is the first edition. We put women in the agribusiness, in the limelight. Our aim is to occupy our public space, because we think that in Senegal, women are not heard nearly enough when it comes to crucial issues. Across West Africa, the Senegalese Ladies Club is already inspiring similar setups. Another platform by women for women has just been created in Benin. Arsène Wenger adds another medal to his collection. Liberian president and former football star George Weah has awarded the ex-Arsenal manager the country's highest honour, receiving the Knight Grand Commander of the Humane Order of African Redemption. Now, during a ceremony in Monrovia on Friday, the Liberian leader hailed his former coach for, quote, revolutionising the approach of scouting young talents, particularly throughout Africa. Let's hear from Mr Wenger. I would like uh, to thank you all for the marvelous hospitality that you have here and we are very surprised and honored. Honored as well by the rewards that are exceptional for us and uh, personally uh, I have a long history indirectly for the Liberian players and of course especially this uh, George. And finally, expensive, extravagant and lavish weddings in Nigeria are increasingly going all out on pageantry, glamour and spending, despite the country's sluggish economy. Many couples tying the knot are stepping up their game in a bid to outdo other nuptials. And the country's wedding planners are scooping up the business with open arms, driving an industry worth millions of naira. Simon Harding has the story. Glamour, tradition, but especially money. Weddings in Nigeria have become a multi-million dollars a year industry and is considered one of the main contributors to the Nigerian economy. Gift presentation and groom prostration are just examples of the fusion between tradition and contemporary that make Nigerian weddings so unique. We love celebrating Nigeria, we love celebrating um, events, but um, giving birth, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, people like to spend. You know, to have a top Nigerian wedding, you have to be able to spend lavishly, you know, have good ambience and, you know, um, great entertainment, and with this cost money. On average, a Nigerian wedding costs between 1 million and 5 million naira, which is the equivalent of eight years of income for middle-class families. 
The event planning um, industry in Nigeria is growing, it's booming. Um, every day planners rise up and you know, it's a good thing because it it's, it's, um, translates to the economy in Nigeria. Competition isn't only between wedding planners, but also for happy couples who are constantly trying to do better than their peers. A thousand guests at a Nigerian wedding is nothing out of the ordinary. People keep trying to outdo each other. I mean, it's always competitive. Not this wedding, but I know one that came boasting that she has handled a wedding where they spent about 25 million on the wedding. That was our selling point. Creating jobs and providing opportunities for people to launch new careers. Costly weddings are the new trend in Nigeria, with the added benefit that the bride and groom will have an unforgettable day, albeit an expensive one. Stay with us. Lots more news coming up.